In today's video, we'll be taking common spare hobby parts and using them to make DIY RC cars. Now, you already know that we love flying big, huge projects outside, but sometimes, you know, the weather's not too good or you just want to have a little evening project to have fun with. And that's what we're going to do today. So back in the day, I used to make these little RC cars out of uh, old servos, broken components, and I used to just scrap these parts together to make little RC cars to race around the house or at RC events. And it was a whole lot of fun. So I figured what better way to end the summer than to bring that memory back and make some more RC cars. Let's get to it. So to build one of these DIY mini RC cars, you're going to need some foam board to cut the pieces out of, some popsicle sticks or an old credit card or gift card, a receiver, two servos, an ESC or BEC to supply your power, a two cell battery, some music wire push rods, heat shrink, a linkage stopper, CA glue, and some hot glue. First things first, we're gonna take our two chassis pieces and glue them together with some hot glue. We're also gonna take our little plywood pieces that have a little hole in the middle and glue them on the sides of the chassis. Make sure when you're gluing these in that the holes on the top and bottom line up and the holes are spaced about a quarter inch from the edge of the body. Next, let's install the steering servo into the rectangular cutout in the bottom of the car. You wanna make sure that when this pokes out of the top, it's not poking out too far and we maintain a sleek profile on the top. Also, so you want to make sure that the servo is oriented correctly so that the servo arm can swing freely in the arced cutout on the top of the frame. Now let's move on to modifying the drive servo. Just keep in mind that this will work with a wide variety of servos, but every servo is going to be a little bit different, but the basic procedure at least is still going to be the same. Let's go ahead and take the servo apart. Just unscrew the four screws from the bottom and pop off the case. And you might have to peel the sticker off in order to get the case undone. Okay. Now you see that there's a chip in the motor. We're just going to lift the chip up. And under the chip, you'll notice that there is a little plastic piece covering the potentiometer. We're going to dig out that little plastic piece and set it aside, but keep track of it because we will be coming back to it later. Now on the inside, you'll want to desolder the potentiometer from the chip. So we're just gonna desolder these three wires here. And we're also going to desolder the same three wires from the chip. Now the idea is that we're going to be replacing the potentiometer with two resistors soldered to the same connectors on the servo chip. To determine, in order to determine what value of resistors we should use, let's go ahead and measure the resistance of the potentiometer. To do that, we'll need a multimeter. Go ahead and set that to the resistance setting and touch the two leads of the multimeter to the two outer leads on the potentiometer. And as you can see on the screen here, the potentiometer is reading 4.77 kilo ohms. Uh, and we're just going to want to have that value uh, to determine the value of the resistors. And I happen to have some 2.2 kilo ohm resistors here, and that should be just fine. So for this servo, we're going to need two 2.2 kilo ohm resistors. And to solder them together, we're just going to take two ends and twist them together, solder those together, fold the two outer leads backwards to make a sort of three prong fork shape, and then clip those uh, about an eighth of an inch away from the resistors. Before we solder this on the chip, we're going to want to pre-tin the two outer leads as well. And now let's solder the resistors right onto the three same connections that we desoldered from the chip earlier. When you're working with small electronics like this, it's best to use small, quick taps of the iron instead of longer presses, uh, just because a little bit of heat really fast will be able to solder these pretty well. The same amount of heat for a longer period of time might actually damage your electronics. When you're soldering this, be careful not to burn yourself and use helping hands if necessary. Now you'll notice that on this particular servo, uh, this connection here at the two outer uh, joints of the resistors is actually bridged with the two small black rectangular components on the chip. This is supposed to be bridged and if it's not, go ahead and bridge it. Um, but this will also depend on exactly what type of servo you're using. So just be aware of that when you're soldering it together. Now we're done with the chip, let's move on to the gears. Just gonna pop the top of the case off. So we actually don't need all the gears that are in this servo. The gear right here on top in the middle, we're just gonna throw away. 
and pull the gears out. Now for this particular servo, once we take out the gears, we're gonna wanna take out the potentiometer as well. We can do that just by pushing on the potentiometer from the top of the servo and pulling it out through the bottom. Now once you take it out, you'll notice that you can't actually rotate it all the way around. It has a couple little plastic stoppers in there that prevent it from rotating 360 degrees. You can simply take some flush cutters and snip those off. You'll also notice that there's some little metal prongs sticking out from the bottom of this uh, moving part on top of the potentiometer. For those, you'll just have to take a little X-Acto knife or something similar, poke it under the prongs and lift them up a little bit so that they're no longer in the way. This will allow the potentiometer to rotate all the way around 360 degrees and give the continuous rotation that we need. Now you can put it back in the servo and we can move on to the gears. Now for the gears in this servo, you're gonna notice that there's five different gears, uh, one actually on the motor and then four off the motor. Now locate the two gears that were originally on the potentiometer and we're going to take the grease off of them with some paper towels and glue them together. If you're just making a normal continuous rotation servo, you can leave all the gears in, but since we want these cars to really scoot around and get going pretty fast, we're gonna take that gear out to make it go faster. Now we can just take a bit of CA and glue it. Thick or medium CA works the best for this. Thin CA is just gonna be a little bit too runny. If you don't have CA, epoxy would also work great. Be careful not to get glue in the actual teeth of the lower gear. And I'm just gonna hit that CA with a little bit of accelerator to make it dry quicker. Now when you spin the servo around, it should go all the way. All right. Now that we have the chip and the gears modified, uh, let's go ahead and plug into a servo tester before we put the case back together. We can power the servo tester just using the balance plug of a normal battery. Make sure you have the polarity right when you're plugging it in. All right. As you can see, if we bring it to neutral, it'll pretty much stop and then we can turn it to the side. It'll rotate one way continuously. And if we bring it to the other side, it'll rotate the other direction continuously. Now let's go ahead and put the case back together. The case might need a bit of modification now that we have these resistors sticking out of the chip. So if you need to, just take some flush cutters or a knife and trim away the plastic of the case until everything fits. Also, when you're putting it back together, don't forget to take that little plastic piece and put it over the potentiometer. This just prevents any components on the servo chip from shorting out on the metal of the potentiometer. All right, our drive server is now complete and we can get back to the rest of the build. All right, so while these guys are going crazy with these little servo RC cars inside, I'm gonna take this time to tell you about the sponsor of this video and that is Policy Genius. Policy Genius was a company literally created to make buying insurance super simple. They've got a couple different types of insurance that you can purchase. So the main one is life and they also do home and auto. So the coolest thing about Policy Genius is that they take the top insurance companies across the board, compare them, and allows you to essentially save up to 40% by just comparing quotes. And as the second largest term life insurance broker, they literally can compare up to 40 different companies to get you the best fit for you and your family. All right, so I know sometimes insurance companies get a bad rap, right? Like there's all these dodgy sales scenarios and these crazy people you gotta deal with. That's not the case with Policy Genius. You literally go on and apply and then Policy Genius takes it from there. There's no none of those dodgy sales scenarios. They just unbiased advice from top experts across the board. Another thing that I really like personally about Policy Genius is that when it's time for you to renew your policies, which happens either every six months or every year, depending on what you decide to do, they literally go in for you to check and make sure that you have the best price guaranteed to fit your needs. And as we all know, information age, a lot of people are selling off information to get more and more and more, right? Well, Policy Genius does not sell your information. So as you guys know, my family's growing. I'm looking for different things across the board. I have a home and auto insurance policy through my mortgage, but actually Policy Genius also allows for home and auto, right? And the coolest thing about that is that Policy Genius has saved their home and auto customers an average of $1,127 a year. When I went through the process of getting 
getting a life insurance quote. It was super simple. They had all of the different options available. You could choose life, you could choose home and auto, etc., etc. But it was cool because you could just go down through the list, you could click the things that you wanted to compare. They give you different price points from different insurers. It was super simple. And so from front to back through the whole process, I was able to find a $500,000 policy for 20 years at $20 a month. So the cool thing about all this is you can visit paulsugenius.com slash flight test to shop the market and start saving today. So a huge shout out once again to Policy Genius for sponsoring this episode. It's awesome companies like them that allow us to do this type of content and people like you that watch the content that allow us to do what we do every single day. So thanks so much to you guys and to Policy Genius. Let's get back and see what else they got going on these crazy RC cars. Now that we've modified our drive servo, we're gonna move on to the wheels. To make the wheels, we're just gonna take some two inch diameter foam discs and glue them together. I found that wheels that are two foam layers thick work pretty well. Next, we'll wanna take two of these wheels, which will be our front wheels, and glue small circular discs on each side of the wheels. You're also gonna have to drill a little hole in the center of each of these discs so that the pushrod wire can slip through and the wheel can spin freely around it. Now for the rear wheel, which will be the drive wheel, we're gonna do it a little bit differently. Instead of reinforcing this wheel with little plywood or plastic pieces, we're just gonna glue the servo arm right onto the foam. It's best to use a disc shaped servo arm or a servo arm with multiple prongs. Now we can simply take a servo screw, screw the rear wheel onto the drive servo and glue the drive servo in place. Make sure when you're doing this that the wheel is aligned with the slot and can spin freely without catching on anything. For the steering system, we're gonna take a push rod, measure out an inch and a half, and put a 90 degree bend in it. Then stick the push rod through the two reinforcement plates from the bottom to the top. Push it all the way through, then take a pair of needle nose pliers, clamp it at the base at the top of the frame, and put a 90 degree bend in the push rod wire towards the rear of the car while making sure that the one and a half inch portion of the push rod is sticking straight outwards of the frame. When you're done with that, it's gonna look a little something like this. Next, we're gonna take our servo arm and install a linkage stopper. I'm just gonna use the outermost hole of my servo arm, widen out the hole with a little X-Acto knife. You can also do this with a drill bit and slide the linkage stopper through. These linkage stoppers are actually just the linkage stoppers that come with our power packs. Make sure when you're installing the linkage stopper that it's tightened enough to stay on the servo arm and enough to prevent it from wobbling too much, but you don't want it so tight that it can't rotate freely in the servo arm. Next, cut a piece of pushrod wire that fits right in between the two pushrod pieces sticking out of the top of the frame. Next, we'll slide this pushrod through our linkage stopper and use a bit of heat shrink to secure it to the pushrod sticking out of the top. This creates a hinge between the pushrod we just cut out and the two pushrods we installed earlier on the sides of the frame, which allows the steering system to actually rotate. Now you want to make sure that the two pushrod pieces sticking out of the sides of the frame are parallel to each other and perpendicular to the length of the chassis. Basically, every single joint on the steering system will be at 90 degrees when it's in its neutral position. If anything isn't lining up well, you can simply bend the wire until it does. Now I'll just secure the heat shrink to the wires with a bit of CA and tighten our linkage stopper. Now let's flip the car over to the bottom and we'll wanna use a little piece of heat shrink again to make a spacer to space the wheels on the front of the frame away from the sides of the frame at least a quarter inch. This will allow the wheels to move around and turn without catching on the chassis. Now to make sure that your front wheels don't fall off of the car, I'm just gonna use some linkage stoppers and secure them on. You can also use a dab of hot glue. Now we're getting to the final stretch of our build. The next thing we're gonna do is install the receiver and our ESC or BEC. You'll wanna plug in the steering servo to the aileron port on your receiver and the drive servo to the elevator port on your receiver. The ESC or BEC connector can go into any port. Now let's plug in a battery, bind it up to our transmitter, and adjust our sub trims. You'll notice that when you have your battery plugged in and your sticks at a neutral position, that your servos might be moving, the drive servo might be rotating, and your steering servo might be slightly off center. To fix this, we'll go into sub trims and use sub trims to make sure that the drive servo is stationary and that the steering servo is centered. Also, for a smoother driving experience, I'm just gonna add a little bit of expo, about 20 or 30% to my aileron. This will slightly dampen my steering and make the car feel a little bit smoother. Now your car is pretty much all done. You can feel free to throw a paint job on it or some colors, some stickers, but you're ready to go and drive around and have fun. All right, so Chris and you guys just partnered up and made an epic course. I feel like I'm seven years old and you have your best friend over and you're like making a tent for it with all of your Matchbox cars. Yeah, Chris and Noah really went hard on this course and it's looking pretty cool. Yeah, it looks amazing. So yeah. what we're gonna do is we're gonna start here. We're gonna go down, we're gonna take a hard right. We're gonna go over the poly car pop. Uh-huh, go under the Kraken. Yep, through gender reveal Kraken. Between the feet of the AT-AT. Mm -hmm. 
We're gonna swerve to miss um, baby. Sky Hook, Sky Hook baby. <laughs> and then we have a bit of a duck slalom here. Uh, we're gonna follow the red tape, and then from there we're gonna shoot into the studio. Uh, take another right. So, so this is a real technical part of the course that we'll have to watch out for. Yep. From that point on, there's another technical spot. It's through the double hoop airplane, mm -hmm. around the pillar. Around the pillar. Dodge the simple stick, dodge the kit fox, <laughs> and then up Cavi's butt. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love Cavi. Uh, go over Cavi's back, roll right on Cavi's face and his eyes, and then this is like the car wash gates or something. Yeah. And then back through to the polycarpop, Kraken. All the same thing again, all the way around. But then this time, before we get to the kite, we're gonna break off to the right, climb the ramp, and then stop on the yellow dot of our H1 racer. Exactly. And uh, that is one round. That's right. Best two out of three? Best out of three. Best out of three. So basically, it's like a lap and a half per round, but we start and end on the yellow dot of the Red Bull logo. Cool, perfect. All right, Anders, you ready? I'm ready, dude. All right. Noah, are you gonna be our designated flipper? Oh yeah. All right. All right, round one. Round one. Cool. Uh, Whoa, sorry. <laughs> trying to get an early start there. Yeah, I <laughs> Just the gun. I forgot how to control it. Three, two, one, go. Hard right, polycarpop wing, gender reveal kraken, ATAT, miss the baby, duck slalom. Woo, woo. And take a right, caution bump. Caution bump is slowing us down for the kite. Super technical. There we go, made it. Oh, oh. Ooh. How you doing back there, buddy? Oh, 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 there we go. Oh, I got it. Almost got stuck at the circle stick. All right, going up Cabby. Down Cabby's face. Ooh, that's a scary ramp. Okay. All right, through the car wash gates. Back through the general reveal Kraken. Oh, man. I got, the, I got the pity grab. Where are you at, man? You don't want to know. <laughs> I'm just making my own way. Alrighty, speed bump, and then... Woo! Oh, I lost my pattern! I'm dragging, oh, my, no. I'm dragging my entrails! <laughs> oh, pity me! <laughs> Alright, that's round one. I'm not gonna waste my battery. That's All right. too sad. Okay, good first round, man. Thanks, dude. Alrighty, you ready for round two? Ready for round two. Cool. Alright. Three. Two, one, go. Oh! Oh no. Where's he at? Is he ahead of me or behind me? I'm behind you again. You're behind me? Don't worry, I'll just... Woo, woo, woo! Dude, the duck slalom is the fun. The duck slalom is so much fun. Hard right. Hard right. Where oh, are you Mr. at? I am just coming up to the kite. Oh. You just bump into me? Maybe. Foul play. Oh, I hate having to line up with the kite. Oh man, dude, circle stick. Ah. Okay. Whoa. Oh, I did that last time too. Ah, fudge. I did it again. What'd you do? You don't. Ah. Okay, wait. All right, Whoa. you know what? There, don't want nothing though. <laughs> you didn't see that. You never saw that. Woo! Jeremy Bill Kraken, that Kraken looks cool. so cool, man. Yeah. Tell me where you are, rub it in. <laughs> oh! <laughs> okay. I love how everyone's pitying me. Dude, what happened? Where are you? I do, my favorite thing is the duck slalom. Yeah. Because I don't get hit, I don't tip over when I hit it. Dude, I was going slow. <laughs> hey! Hey, hey, hey! What's going on here? <laughs> no! No! no. I'll kill you! No! My car, man! Okay, sorry, at? sorry. Dude, he looks very fast. It's the red, man. Red it's makes him go faster. All right. Here we go. Round three? Yeah, round three. Three, two, one, go. Whoa! Wow, okay. I think he... I got stuck there for a second. Woo! I gotta catch up. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? I'm around the duckies! Oh, here's that dreaded 
Oh, the kite. This is where I catch up. Oh, yeah. Nope, or he got the weight behind me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I didn't oh. think about that. I do it. Hey! Oh, no! Hey! Good! Oh, no. Oh, oh no! Oh, dude. The clearance in here is so minimal. Who made this kite? I don't know. I hear Andrew on cabby. On cabby. Down the slide. I think that's the first time I'm laying down the slide, face forward. Woo! Yeah, this is the closest I've ever come to actually being a close second. Are, are you close behind me? I don't know. I think I'm. Where are you at? I am uh, coming up towards the finish. Well, Gosh, then no. <laughs> Aww. Woo! Da -da -da. Andrew. Thanks, dude. That was a lot awesome. of fun. That was a lot of fun. That was so much fun. We've had so much fun losing so bad, but it was <laughs> worth it. It was absolutely worth it. Guys, this is an awesome project you guys can do with some spare parts and maybe about an hour of your spare time yeah. to have loads of fun. I think we're going to be having a lot of fun with this. And Andres, great design, man. Thanks, man. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next time.